بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلم ونصلي على رسوله الكريم سيد المرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد دين انكار جزاس تو بي بريبيرد فور بوث ذا وولز نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحه والفراغ There are two blessings which many people are at loss. It is a liability on their shoulders. Health and free time. So this hadith of Bukhari is alluding to the fact that this is an avenue where you may get caught. This is an avenue where you may get trapped. So be cautious, be careful. So whether it's deen, whether it's dunya, a believer is always vigilant. So he is, he is avarice, he is desirous to see where he can be efficient, where he can be proficient, and he has achieved maximum productivity. Not just loving life, not just waking up every day, not just passing time, not just being there for the sake of formality, but for reality, the haqiqat. So a person doesn't want to be at loss because free time is a bounty until you are busy, until you lose your life and uh, health is a bounty until you get ill or sickness or lose life. It says that Abdullah ibn Musud used to say that I am amazed and this person can be rebuked that I see him free. لَيْسَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ عَمَلِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا عَمَلِ الْآخِرَةِ That he doesn't do anything good for his deen nor his dunya. He is at the greatest loss. So these bounties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with a believer knows how to look after time and not waste his time. So productivity. There was a story of a lady who appeared before a judge in a divorce action. So the judge asked her, how old are you? She replied, 35. The judge noted that she had a lot of wrinkles and her hair was grey. So as a matter of interest, he said, may I see your birth certificate. So she handed the judge her birth certificate. So he was upset. He said, Madam, according to the certificate, you are not 35 but 50. So the lady now said, Your Honor, the last 15 years I spent with my husband, which I am not counting. Do you call that a life? Do you call that a life? It wasn't life, I didn't love life. So I minus 15 years because of my husband. So wasting time, she considered that a waste of time. What will we consider a waste of time when we are in the Qabr? What will we consider a waste of time when we are faced with a life-threatening situation, when we are faced, Allah protect one and all with a burglary, with a robbery, with a kidnapping scenario? What? Well, we consider. So planning is important, but also planning correctly, not just to plan, not just to do actions, but to exhaust every avenue to plan correctly. Like there was a couple in their 90s, they became, appeared before a judge. It's also a divorce case. The wife was moaning and groaning. She says, my husband is a gambler. He's out at night. He has an affair. He's on drugs. I can't take it anymore. I have had enough. So then the husband heard this, he counted. He said, she doesn't do any housework, she's lazy. Her cooking is atrocious. She's got no time for me and she just sleeps most of the time. And I don't, uh, she's, she's, she's not a faithful wife. So the ju judge was even more shocked because you got the husband with this case, wife, also this situation here. This is how long has this been going on for? So they chorused after uh, approximately 70 years. So the judge was even more shocked. 
So how did you manage to love with each other for so long? Why didn't you just part, part your ways, go on your own, own and, and, and sort your life out? So again they replied, well we were waiting for the kids to die. We were waiting for the kids to die. So planning, but what kind of planning? What consequences? So doing things properly. So busy with moving, leaving house, going out, outdoors, etc. So there are a few fatal mistakes. One is complacency. A person has the same routine and no alertness, awareness, situational awareness, etc. Number two, not reacting. So in that situation, if a person has some skills, they, they would uh, react somehow. Number three, not allowing an exit point. So when you react and you are not aware and you never plotted your daily travels, etc., then you wouldn't know the exit points. Likewise, um, awareness of primary and secondary rules. Have you, do you ever save house, any safe havens, etc.? Um, then skills. So we have no basic skills of anything. And lastly, panicking. So most people panic. Why? Because they're not trained, they never groom their mind. So whether it's anti ambush drills, whether it's driving skills. Um, so important. These, these are where La ilaha illallah people fail. So identifying busy areas, where's a shop, where's a petrol station. Um, if a person has to escape and they go into a crowd or go into a shop or something like that there, how do you react? So don't just scream, you may cause panic, you may, that person may think you're robbing them and, and, and harm you, think you're a threat. So you need to be rational, you need to be reasonable. Um, a sound alarm, it's a very small gadget, very easy. If your bag is full, it will automatically activate, etc. So, uh, some buildings, the keys that you carry, your bag, is there a name, there's an address? Uh, do you carry trackers on your bags? Uh, safe enough? So, even if they ransack that bag, you can still track it. So, simple things in that situation where you know you're going to an area, then the clothing that you're wearing, the shoes that you're wearing, does it allow free movement? High heels, low heels. Uh, in that situation, if you have shoes which are uncomfortable, groom your mind, run barefoot. But if you're going to run barefoot and you're not used to running barefoot, then uh, will, will that help? Uh, so some people uh, have these fancy shoes, but uh, how is it going to help? Then can the shoes be used as a weapon? So know which shoes you can wear, at which areas which can be used as a weapon, which is uh, facilitating free movement. Then uh, when walking, etc., and you perceive threats as well, use uh, the store windows, use the reflections to, to notice. So, so if you want to have some awareness, then, then use third party uh, mirrors, etc. Then with regards to public transport. So if a bus is very crowded, etc., people are pressing all around you, so you are able to watch, you will not be able to protect your beginning, uh, belongings, etc. So crowds are never a traveler's friend. So anybody is a pickpocket, a thief, uh, they can escape very easily. You won't even know. So any any bus stops, etc. At night, stay far away. Whether it's lonely, uh, abandoned, etc. When uh, you board a bus as well, if there's a downstairs and upstairs also, try to stay uh, sit at the downstairs. It's generally more busier and where the driver can see you, visibility. So, and sitting near the exit and entrance. So be prepared for a, a, a retreat situation. Where's the glass breakers? Where's the, the train stoppers, the bus stoppers? So uh, you need to be aware of all of these emergency chains, etc. And uh, if you enter a compartment, a bus, and it is completely empty, and uh, you perceive a risk, wait for the next one. Uh, 
بي اليرت بي اوي دونت بي دوزي الثاجيك فولين اسليب وين يو توكين اون ذا فون اكسترا دونت دونت جيف ديتيلز بيبل ار لسنين تو يور كونفرزيشن يو مي بي ا ثيف ذاتس ذي ان ذا فيسينيتي تو 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 اكستراكت انفورميشن سو يو واتش فور ذا فيرست دي اوكي ذن ذي ويل فولو يو سلولي ثيرد دي فورث دي مي بي ات كان بي ا ويك تو ويكس ليتر وي ذي ويل باونس You sit in some, next to somebody. You don't need to give details of your life. You are a, a, a financial portfolio manager. You are a banker. Uh, important information. So, for the sake of preservation, healer, to 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 withhold information. You don't need to make conversation at all in the first place. Um, open your Quran. Start making dhikr. Start making your duas. When you are busy, nobody will trouble you. So, turn engage in amal. Likewise, if a person is in a situation and there's no way they can escape, then the bathrooms may be a safe haven, and there may be a panic button in the bathroom, etc. So very important. Likewise, uh, if a person is threatened, then uh, what's the recourse? You need to be planning in that situation when you embark. Likewise, uh, if you notice anything suspicious at any point of the journey, notify the authorities. Somebody might board a train and think so. Hey, you know what? I'm safe. Uh, there's a compartment of people. There was an incident where in UK, London, two masked armed men uh, came onto the train where the compartment was was full, and they uh, robbed the entire carriage. So uh, don't put anything pass by anyone. You done. You arrive at home. Now you you fumbling, looking for the keys. Where's the keys, etc. So it'll take that one minute before everything is over. So there were gangs that were following people. So whether you get into your driveway, whether you get to your home, etc. Um, be ready. Be alert. Some people have the habit of talking on the street. Somebody leaves your house, you're still outside talking. No. In the vicinity, behind the gate, talk as long as you want. But when you're outside, they need to move. They need to leave, and that we need to get into the groove. So, a person puts themselves and the family at risk uh, in the name of conversation, in the name of catching up things. But we don't notice the cars passing by. What plan of action do we have? So remember the fact rule: F A C T, fact rule. Number one, flight. So. I need to get away as far as, as possible. So don't think, act. Fact, act. So uh, number two, attack. If if you need to attack and it hit a one knockout punch, breakaway punch, and Allah has put the natural adrenaline, use use every form of energy that you have, and uh, make sure it's 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 you do, do a thorough job. But remember that. If it's one or two people in front of you, they have probably it's a team of five, seven. So if you're going to run, also there may be somebody who's going to trip you. There's somebody that's going to block you. There's somebody that's going to knock you. So don't run thinking that you alone with the person that you've uh, ran from and incapacitated. But be vigilant of people now on the street who may poach as a. A humanitarian, they there to help you. Hey, excuse me, what's wrong? No, no, no. That person's there to get you as well. So, so don't trust anyone. Don't trust anyone. Then uh, th number three, compromise. So if you can't manage to get away, what should you do? What what personal alarms? What what uh, red light should go on? What resistance and defense you should put forward? And lastly, number four is T tactic. What tactic do you have in place? Then with regards to taxis, getting into the taxi, firstly you need to recognize the vehicle before you even get in. Then you look for the official badge, the permit, um, uh, agreeing to the price, it's the meter, non-meter, what's the price, this is my destination. Do they expect a tip or not? Because you can go into some argument and, and risk your life with the taxi driver. Are you in control over your bags and packages? So you just dump everything in the boot and then go and sit in, or are you watching that every last bag is put in, and then uh, uh, is sealed and closed? 
Do you, do you take important valuable items? Do you have it on your person or you just leave it haphazardly there? Then you take in a public transport, are you sharing? So a person will save money, but uh, what if that person leaves some contraband in the vehicle? And then uh, fake cops stop that taxi, which they discover those items. So they'll say we're going to arrest you. In the meanwhile, they are fake police. So you have to be very cautious. So control over your bags, control over your possessions. Um, does anybody have similar bags? So even when you buy a bag, it shouldn't be something that everybody uh, has. It's easily available and, and identify marks so that it doesn't get, nobody gets confused. Um, then uh, if a person for some reason gets delayed also, what time of the hour, what time of the night, what possible threats they are. Um, making a note and description of the taxi. So whether it's a mental note, uh, the registration of the vehicle, then keep a record of that. If you need to keep the driver's name and details, uh, take a snapshot of that. Likewise, uh, when you get dropped off, also wait. So tell the taxi driver to wait till you get inside the house. Um, don't, don't, don't be lax and think so that I'm just going to go in, but uh, here's somebody who can call help for you. So uh, even in, your, in the taxi, you have to plot the route, know where you are going, see if they're going in the right direction. It could be a fake taxi. They're taking you somewhere and there's an ambush planned. So monitor the route. If you need to call for help, call for help. When you get into the taxi as well, many people go into the front seat. Uh, don't get uh, into the front seat. Go in the back seat. It's more safer. Um, if you are uh, entering and you are doubtful, don't get in. Say, sorry, I'm cancelling. So for ladies, is there any taxi uh, driver, public transport where they are female drivers? So just a matter of precaution. Uh, we have to be cautious. Then uh, the taxi driver may engage in talk again. We like to boast. We like to give information. I'm from this country. I do this here. This is my business. A lot of sweet tongue. He's already profiling you. He's got a, a syndicate. Oh, we knows when he drops you off. What's your timelines? Where what you where you stay in? What you do? So the rest of the information will be sold. So. Don't, 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 don't uh, take things for granted. You order in a taxi, whether it's on uh, uh, an Uber or you making a call and you need to call a taxi and you give in your details also. So information. People go out every day and they jog. Uh, they have the habit of wearing a Walkman and, and uh, being oblivious of the situation. So we don't know familiar areas, familiar routes. Uh, same route every day, we don't change our route, we don't change our time, etc., our schedules. Then, um, likewise, we common areas, stay away from areas where it is risk. Well, let areas, if it's sunset time or early in the morning, then why jog alone? Jog in a group. If there's a, a position of compromise, what's Chappell's protocol? People run with their phone and other valuables in sight. Then when going to an ATM, so don't go to an exposed lo location, choose uh, location wise. Likewise, don't uh, in advance, uh, keep your card ready, means take it out from your bag, keep it out from your wallet, keep it in a place where it's just a one touch movement. Uh, keep it ready. Then uh, if an ATM is in a corner of the building, don't, don't, don't go to that ATM, it's a blind spot. Then uh, automated banking, etc. Try to use your online banking structures. Okay, somebody says I need cash, but nowadays what's the need of cash? Um, so try to keep that cash in hand uh, where you don't need to go to ATMs. Maintaining awareness of the environment. When you go to the ATM and you see something's unusual as well, you're not familiar with it, you're uncomfortable, there's uh, card schemers that are there. So doesn't necessarily they have to attack you to get the money out of you. There's different uh, mechanisms in place where they can steal your information and sell your information as well. So anything that you notice, whether it's 
uh, tape, whether it's glue, whether it's scratches, anything abnormal as well. Then you got the cash, don't count it in public, make sure nobody sees how much you are withdrawing. Uh, monitor your bank statements, don't people, people don't ever check their bank statements, all their money is gone before they know it. So if you have to use ATM or throw small amounts, why the need for big amounts? And uh, remember, if you need to play the game, play the game. Make like you put in the card, make like it's not working, make like you're frustrated and walk away, you doubted the situation. Oh, my card is blocked. Just, uh, if there is a risk, then, then and the, take the necessary procedures. So, where people are standing, uh, where, how close are you, can they see the pin, etc. So, these are all protocols which are very important and uh, Allah SWT give us tawfiq of making amal. The amal for today is that uh, to learn deen, to propagate deen, نَظَّرَ اللَّهُ مْرَأَنْ سَمِيَ مِنَّا شَيْئًا فَبَلَّغَهُ كَمَا سَمِيَهُ May Allah keep that person hail and healthy who conveys what we have got to them. So the hadith of Nabi alayhi salam, they, they uh, conveyed exactly as they heard it. مُبَلَّغِينَ أَوْ آمِنْ سَامِئِينَ Many a time a person who receives a message has a better memory than the one who actually heard it. So we've heard it, now we should make تَبْلِغَ وَبِدْ وَاخِرُ دَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالِمِينَ